which I posed earlier of uh, doping must be recognized as drug abuse. And even those substances that our young people are being caught with, those substances must be rated as drugs. And, and, and the penalties uh, method on the offenders must be as severe as the penalties we have for, the, for what you want to call the, the hard narcotics. And so this is, this is an area where we, we have to work. We have, a, we have to approach it through education. I know there is a very useful program called the Olympic Values Education Program, uh, which integrates a number of values that can, that can be part of our CBC training program. And uh, this can be done in partnership with bodies like NACADA, and uh, ADAC. ADAC is the, agents, uh, the anti doping uh, agency of Kenya. But it is a space which will take a multi agency, a multifaceted approach, and it requires incredible volume of resources. It is something which government must have an, an integrated, clear framework. I can tell you that because the majority of the people who are affected are young people, on Rembomboko, what I can commit at this stage is that if I'm confirmed in, in this office, I would be a champion against drug abuse within cabinet to push for a framework by government, an integrated framework that can confront this monster before it destroys a whole generation right before our eyes. Uh, Honorable Speaker, alongside the drugs is gambling. Gambling and um, this is another, is another huge challenge. And I remember the last time I was in this honorable house, we grappled with this challenge of how do we, I remember especially the contributions of uh, the late Jakoyo Midio, who was very passionate about this agenda on, uh, on, 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 on the risk uh, posed to our young people by gambling. Again, this is an area which we have to manage the gambling industry is a big global enterprise, a big global enterprise. Um, the betting firms uh, are also now some of the key partners in the, in the space of uh, financing sports. And so we need to find a framework to balance this. And again, it is an area where I'll be available to listen to best practices to see how we can manage that space better, Mr. 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 Speaker, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Honorable Gikaria, we just, we just must fund local. I said earlier we have to go basic. We have to start right from, from the bottom. I do recall that in the early days when some of our teams were doing very well, Harambe Stars was doing very well, teams like Gormahia were winning continental uh, uh, tournaments. It's a time when they had a stream of talent flowing in right from the grassroots. Teams like uh, FC Lepers would get players straight from Kakamega High School. You, you could see some form of conveyor belt, conveying talent, and that talent feeding the national teams and, uh, and, uh, and our Harambe stars. We have to go back to those basics and we have to send funds to where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. Honorable Russell, uh, for me, it's not even looking out of the box. It is thinking completely, entirely, absolutely, without ambiguity, without the box. So that we throw away the box and just now think afresh anew so that we can take this country to the, to the next level. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Bob, I'll ask you just one or two questions. Uh, I want to focus on our athletes because in our sports, they're the most visible Ambassadors. Mm. One of them, Isola mentioned of Kenya's national anthem being played mm. in the most unexpected places mm. because one of our athletes has struck a gold medal, mm. has beaten the world. Mm. But eventually, these world beaters mm. get captured by promoters and agents. Would you consider when, if you get the opportunity to run this ministry, to engage the Attorney General and start a vibrant legal support program to help these young Kenyans when they want to engage those agents 
there must be a lawyer on hand to draft a contract that is enforceable 